Mazuma TV back in the building, man. What's going on, y'all? Shout out to Mazuma Nation. Shout out to the Mazuma Mob. We in the building as always, man. I hope everybody's having a blessed, beautiful, positive, productive day. Here chilling at work right now, man. Feeling extremely blessed. On the road to 2K, man. We hit that mid-1700 mark pretty quick. You know what I mean? Um, we'll be at the 1800 mark in due time, man. Shout out to the nation. Shout out to the mob for making this possible. All right, y'all. Let's talk about this whole conflict, dilemma, whatever the hell you want to call it between... Devin Haney, Bill Haney, Shakur Stevenson, man, there's definitely been some bad blood between the Haney's and Shakur Stevenson as of lately. You know what I mean? Um, and if you know the history, then you know. You know what I'm saying? But just to give you a little, uh, give you a little bit of background, man, it seems like they they started off as good friends, man. They know each other since they was kids. You know what I mean? To the point where you know Shakur Stevenson was staying at their house. They was traveling together for amateur matches and you know sparring and all types of stuff so they definitely have a history they were pretty good friends at one point in time but seems like things started to take a shift after Shakur Stevenson moved up to the lightweight division while Devin Haney was undisputed in that division man it seems like um uh Shakur Stevenson wanting to be the best like trumped the relationship that they both had you know what I mean so uh I guess things had gotten a little bit spicy between the two you know because they will, they could possibly be rivals, possibly be opponents for each other. You know, things got a little bit personal in the in the midst of that. You know what I mean? Definitely, some things were definitely said that didn't need to be said. You know, it just took it a little bit too far. But nonetheless, man, they not seeing eye to eye right now. They not fucking with each other, and that's just what it is. You know what I mean? Friends just turn into bitter rivals. That's what it seems like at this point in time. So, you know... Devin Haney has moved on since then. You know, he's gotten a WBC title from Regis Progre. And now he's lined up to face Ryan Garcia. You know what I mean? Ryan Garcia being one of the most talked about um, fighters in the boxing world right now. And it's not for the best reasons. You know what I mean? It seems like Ryan Garcia is mind is all over the place. He doesn't seem like he's focused on the fight. He seems like he's focused on everything. Social media, you know, the the the, thing, the problems with the kids, talking about his past traumatic uh, situations and stuff like that. It seems like he's more focused on that than uh, locking in on Devin Haney. You know what I mean? I do see him in the gym. I do see him hitting pads, but um, that's being overshadowed by the majority of the things that he's saying online to the point where the uh, New York State Athletic Commission wants to do a mental evaluation. You know, there's a lot of suspicions and, you know, rumors behind the scenes that they could pull him out as early as this week. And um, this caught the, the attention of Shakur Stevenson. You know what I mean? He had he had made his he had like uh, through his bidding uh, not too long ago, but it was pretty much overshadowed, and ignored because of all the crazy stuff that Ryan Garcia was saying. But he has brought it back up um, recently. You know what I mean? I believe it was last night. They were going back and forth or earlier today. I'm not sure. But regardless, the situation did unfold. And Shakur Stevenson was expressing his interest in making the fight happen. You know, Bill Haney responded to it and said, bro, you like you never made a fight um, on your own a day in your life. You know what I mean? Bob Arum is the one that's in charge of making your fights like that. So and, and you know this, too. So it just seems like you clout chasing at the end of the day. You feel what I mean? Um, and, you know, a lot of other things were brought up in terms of, you know, you know, taking the 25 percent and things of that nature, which, you know, I'm not going to get into all of that, man. That's an old thing. You know what I mean? But regardless, you know, they got into all of that. You know, some insults were exchanged as well from Shakur Stevenson and stuff like that. But regardless, man, that's what's currently going on. Now, I'm going to speak as objectively as possible. I think it's about time that we have an honest conversation about Shakur Stevenson. You know what I mean? Out of all the young guys, we talking about Tank, Shakur, Devin, you know, in or around 35 to 40. Shakur Stevenson is somebody that I respect highly. And I think that he's the most skilled one out of all of them. If we being objective, you know, that's just my opinion. You know what I mean? When I look at everybody's skill set, respectfully, I do think that Shakur Stevenson stands out from the rest. That's my personal opinion, along with guys like Terrence Crawford, Andre Ward, and stuff like that. There's a lot of people who seem to agree with me, so I know I'm not tripping. But um, it seems like I started to look at him kind of different since that 25% situation, man, because he could have easily uh, taken on that situation, and if Devin Haney were to back out after sending that offer, then it would have made Devin Haney look bad. You know what I'm saying? But um, Shakur Stevenson goes around with this hashtag called Chasing Greatness. So under that under that uh, saying, I'm thinking that he'll prioritize the opportunity over, you know, the business. You know what I'm saying? Because there are fighters that have came up in the past, you know, taking that small amount of money and, you know, making that sacrifice to ultimately get the win and become the big dog. That's essentially what Devin Haney did going into that Cambosas fight. He took the short money. He did the rematch clause. He took the shitty top rank deal to become the man. You know what I mean? In his division, and it ended up paying off. 
um, to the point where guys like Shakur Stevenson is calling him out. You know, you know what I mean? He's pretty much the big dog at 140 pounds right now. So um, it ended up working out. But, you know, Shakur Stevenson didn't do that. You know, instead, you know, he he was talking about being, he, he got low-balled, he turned down the offer, then pretty much tried to backdoor Devin Haney and uh, try to get WBC involved so they could mandate him and, you know, pretty much uh, force that 60-40 type person, I believe, the WBC uh, ruling has, and uh, pretty much try to force Devin Haney to either fight for the belt or give up the belt. And he ended up receiving that, you know what I mean? Because, you know, Devin Haney did give up the belts and uh, Shakur was able to obtain the WBC lightweight title. But it just seemed like he went about that situation kind of iffy because you're talking about wanting this fight, wanting this fight, and then they offer you this fight. Um, and you're making it seem like you're willing to accept the fight by any means. And then they offer you that 25%. You're like, nah. And, 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 it's like, come on, bro. Like, you should have taken that opportunity if you're chasing greatness like you say you are. Each time you chase greatness, it doesn't guarantee a big purse or you getting something that you feel you deserve. You got to take them pay cuts sometimes in order to become the man. We've seen Floyd do it, who ended up being the biggest superstar in the sport of boxing. You know what I mean? Oscar De La Hoya did him dirty in negotiations, and he still followed through and did what he had to do. And after he beat De La Hoya, he became the man. You see what I mean? But, you know, a lot of people don't really learn from their history. But sometimes they feel like they're above certain things that have happened in the past. You feel me? So um, ever since then, I've been looking at Shakur Stevenson kind of funny. And then in regards to this whole fight and Shakur Stevenson possibly being a substitute for Ryan Garcia, it makes absolutely no sense. And the reason why it doesn't really make no sense because this is a Golden Boy fight in association with Devin Haney Promotions. Golden Boy is the one that's, you know, bringing it to the big stage. They're the main ones getting this this fight on the like on the on the on the charts. You know what I mean? Like how am I trying to say this? Like Golden Boy is the is the guy. They the ones who putting the bread up. They the ones who showcasing the event. They're the guys. You see what I mean? Shakur Stevenson has two promoters from what I understand. I forgot the other guy's name, but you know, he's also with Top Rank. So you mean to tell me that if Top Rank, I mean, if Golden Boy, right, they're looking for a replacement for Ryan Garcia, you think that they're going to bring Top Rank on board, bring Shakur Stevenson and Top Rank on board so they could split so they could split some money between Top Rank, uh, Shakur Stevenson's other promoter, and Devin Haney Promotions? They, got, they just going to break the bread up like that? No. Like I said, and I've been saying this in my previous videos, that does not make business sense. They're not going to bring a top-ranked fighter over to a Golden Boy promotion. You know what I'm saying? To showcase this event, bro. It makes absolutely zero sense. They will have zero fighters involved in their main event. They're not going to make... Like, it just doesn't make sense, bro. I don't know how else to really put it. You feel me? If they're going to replace... Ryan Garcia with somebody is going to be a Golden Promotions fighter, Golden Boy Promotions fighter, which is Arnold Barbosa. He, they brought him on stage. They introduced him to the people because they are under the impression that it is likely that Ryan Garcia is going to pull out. So let's introduce Arnold Barbosa to the table so that way people, won't, people will be familiar with who he is when he has to step in for Ryan Garcia. You feel what I mean? It's a Golden Boy promotion. They have a big fight, you know what I mean? Big main event with Devin Haney. Devin Haney is not a Golden Boy fighter, so they need at least one fighter to be with Golden Boy Promotions for their main event. Why the hell? Why the hell would they have a main event with two fighters from different promotional companies? It makes absolutely zero sense. And what's crazy to me is that Shakur Stevenson knows that. He knows that that's not likely. He knows that doesn't make business sense. He knows he has a fight in July. He knows that he's fighting at the Prudential Center, and he knows that he's looking for an opponent right now. And the fight is literally it's March 18th today. So it's four four weeks of some change until the fight happens. You but you about to get ready for a fight in four weeks. I understand you live in the gym, but you I doubt you going heavy like I, I doubt you having a heavy training camp right now. You probably staying sharp. Yeah, you know I mean you probably sparring here and there. But do you think that would you honestly take a big fight against Devin Haney on four weeks notice? Do you think Devin Haney would take a big fight against Shakur Stevenson on four weeks notice, training for a southpaw when he's fighting for? A orthodox and Ryan Garcia who fights nothing like Sh Shakur Stevenson. It absolutely makes no sense. But what I'm trying to get across is Shakur Stevenson knows that. He knows that this isn't likely. So this is why I understand why they're calling him a clout chaser. You see what I mean? You know that the fight's not likely to happen. You know you're not next for Devin Haney. 
You see what I mean? So with that being known, it's like you just talking shit. You just talking just to get some type of attention. And that's textbook definition of a cold chaser. You see what I mean? So that's just my whole take on the situation. And in terms of Devin Haney saying that he doesn't have the same energy for Javante Davis, how many times have we seen Shakur Stevenson come out and talk crazy to Javante Davis? You know what I'm saying? He he was uh, Shakur Stevenson was the one of the ones trolling after the leak sparring session between Tank and Haney came out. Uh, he was trolling Devin Haney like, damn, like you got your ass whooped. And then uh, uh, Tank replied to him and was like, yeah, you know what it is too, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like you know what it is too. And like Shakur Stevenson replied in like a reserve type uh, manner. You see what I mean? So it's like, bro, you talk crazy to Dev, who's not in your weight class as of right now. But the current guy that's in your weight class and is essentially one of the biggest stars in the sport of boxing, you kind of reserved with. So the energy's not the same. So if you're going to talk crazy to Devin Haney, who's a rival of yours, you need to talk the same way to Javante Davis. You know what I'm saying? You like running your mouth. I know you said you will beat Javante, but it just seems like that static, that hostile energy that you have towards Devin Haney. You know what I mean? You're making it seem like it's all like a competitive thing. You just want to prove you the best. Why not show that same side to Javante Davis? You know what I'm saying? The man that's actually in your weight class. And as far as I'm concerned, I think he has a WBA title at lightweight. So he's a champion in your division. So why don't you just push for that fight? Push for that fight. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't sound like it, it, it's... It, it, the energy's not the same, man. It's not. I'm not even going to lie to you. It, it, it's not the same. But it is what it is, man. That's my overall take on the situation, man. I'm calling Shakur Stevenson a cap artist on this one. I'm calling him a clout chaser on this one because he knows that the likelihood of him fighting uh, Devin Haney on four weeks' notice, he knows that's not likely. And the fact that it's going, it's going under a Golden Boy promotion and he thinks that he's going to join a Golden Boy promotion with a DHP fighter... The fact that he believes that a Golden Boy Promotions card main event is going to be a DHP fighter along with a top rank fighter doesn't make sense at all, man. You know what I'm saying? Just think about it logically. You know, take your head up out of Shakur Stevenson's ass and just think objectively, man. And once you'll be able to understand that, which Shakur Stevenson understands as well, then you got no choice but to just admit that Shakur Stevenson is looking like a cloud chaser at this point. So that's my overall take on the situation, man. Shout out to my Puerto Rican brother, by the way, Shakur Stevenson. You know, we all fuck up sometimes, but, you know, we just got to keep it a thousand. You know what I mean? But this is Mazuma TV. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm out of here, man. Peace.